Hi guys, I want to share with you a little tutorial on how I've made these three simple books in front of you. There are three different styles going on here. The first one was made using jelly prints and as you can see we've got samples on the front, samples on the back and this is all my waste and then we've just got this beautiful selection up to 20 different designs are going on here of my jelly printing and it just stands up like so and as you can see this is called Sortinid, this is called Sortinid and we've just got a really nice sample book going on there. Then I came home and went, Do you know, I'm going to try my hand at using some of my 6x6 designer paper pads and this works really well in this project. Again, you can see that I have put in 20 different samples going on here, distressed the paperwork and I just think that is really, really quite a nice way. I put an embossed piece of card on the back there. So, moving on, i done a vintage one. So there's many ways you can play around with this and this has just got some of my collage work that I folded up, some tissue paper that's going on this side and more music paper in the centre. So this one isn't completely finished but I wanted to have a few goes and these are going to go out I think to friends as little presentations apart from my jelly printed one that's going to stay with me. So let's share with you how easy these are to make. I've also put on this one some die cuts in my collection so if you've got some die cuts that would be also a handy way of using up some of the items you've got. For this tutorial and to make this little book I have used as I've said a 6x6 paper pad. In my case I have used some Floral Fantasy by Louise Tiller. I had some Laura Ashley and I also had some Simply Flora by um, Paper Mania. So these are the three paper pads that I've used. You're going to need 20 sheets of 6 by 6 but bear in mind once these are cut you will be able to make approximately three books. So once you've done the prep work you can do three of these. The only thing you will need a little bit more for is the front and back covers. Alongside the 6x6 paper pads I have used 100 gram paper stock from Paper Mania and I've used A4 sheets and I've used just plain white here and as I said let me just share with you I've got the pad of paper so this has come from Paperworks, Paper Chase and as I said it's a uh, A4 which works out to 210 stroke 297 millimetres 100 gram stock of A4 paper and you will need three of these sheets and that will be all that is required to make this little simple quarter in a book. I've got a scoreboard and I have a cutter but I've converted it also into centimetres so you can use a fa old fashioned pencil and ruler and a pair of scissors so that is also going to be achievable. Now the good side of using A4 sheets of paper from my perspective is there is no measuring required down the outside edge. Everything fits nicely into three sheets. So with your three sheets of paper, I'm going to immediately get stuck in and suggest that you measure your three, you're going to cut out three Corsaltina pieces of paper. So I have got centimetres and inches on here. We're going to work in inches and I'm going to lay that on top of my A4 paper. It also helps me as I give you the sizing. So I have scored my first section 
with the A4 paper in, as you can see, a rectangle not lengthways but going across the top edge at 4.68 of an inch and I've scored down. Then I've taken my paper because this works out along this outer edge if you haven't got A4 at 8 inches 2 eighths. So once I've scored it, I've folded it, I haven't cut it, I've butted it back up into the corners and repeated the process and yet again scored at 4 inches 6 eighths. Two of these sections will be discarded but the third one we are going to keep because it will make the spine. So if you were to score all three pieces of A4 paper in the same manner, you will then have sufficient for your three corsaltine covers. So you're going to cut one, two, three out. You then want to move on to your covers. On your third sheet, you are going to turn it around, butt it up into the corners. Yet again, I'm going to bring my cover template in. So we know it's already scored at 4.6 apes, but on our cover, we are going to score it at 6 and 1 eighth all the way down. So if I take that off, 6 and 1 eighth. And now we've got a front cover, a back cover, because there's a score in between, there's a score at the bottom. also have the spine here. So have I got a pencil to hand? So front cover, back cover and in the far right hand corner we've got the spine and this section here we are going to cut off and discard. So I've already done this for you and if you are into distressing your paper, I can also move my scoreboard as well. If you're into distressing, you are only really inking up the outer edges, both sides, front and back. And you can see this is where I've just taken my paper and I've just gone along with my distressing vintage photo from Tim Holtz and my makeup sponge and I've literally just done that across because that was what I had to hand but you do not need to put distress ink because we're going to cover over the front section it really is just to get those outer edges all done so here we've got our three corsetina sections our front and back cover and we have got it might get my bit that is a distress we've also got the spine and you're going yes but you've actually managed to crease your spine so the next section is to tell you how to make the 1 8 or 5 mil spine so we've your spine already cut out. One of the things you can do is if you butt up your paper and approximately look eyeball around about five mils down and then crease. Turn your paper around Yes, again, bring the bottom cover over, trying to keep an eyeball and around about five mils below or one eighth. 
and yet again crease what you will actually do is put in a center spine if not if that's not your preferred method you can find the center which I believe So you've got centimetres and inches. So this happens to be two inches, one eighth, or approximately five centimetres would be if we're doing it in centimetres. And find the centre and then go out by one eighth either way and then you will have your and score down and then you'll have your spine that way. Right, so we've got all our pieces of plain paper that has been distressed. Next thing we need to do is work out our designer paper. And for the designer paper, again, I've distressed it. I've got one for the front and I've got one for the back. And we're going to cut our front and back cover by five and six eighths and four and a half inches and the reason why the measurements are slightly different to the front and back covers that we've done before is because I would like it to just have a little bit of um, an outer edge, a, a little border because that's why we've gone to all that difficulty of distressing and to fill the corsetina we are going to need at least, as I said 20 pieces of designer paper and I am looking around <laughs> and this can be cut you can get three sections out of one sheet of six by six paper because you can score these at every two inches so if it's a six by six that gives you three sample pieces of paper out of one sheet thus allowing you to make up to three of these books in one sitting and it measures I have got this one measured to four and six eighths so it, it literally is the same size as the paper but if you wish to either write something at the bottom you can adjust these so you've got more of a border on each of the pieces of paper because some of these I have just made a one eighth smaller to go onto the pages so we've got 20 of these already pre-cut out and distressed let's put it together so I've got a glue stick to hand any glue stick I'm sure you could wet, use wet glue, tacky glue, it, Elmer's glue, it's, it's entirely up to you but a glue stick works really really well for this project. So I'm going to discard the front and I've probably hidden the back cover or put it somewhere out of sight. But with our corsetinas we are going to fold them in half. So we've got these three sheets, we're going to repeat the same method, find the centre, crease down well, from the centre bring out your top piece of paper and allow it to meet again where you made the last crease, crease, turn it over and again bring that in to the centre and we're actually going to do this on all three and you can see why I've distressed both sides. I think there's one here that I decided didn't need distressing because it will be in the centre of the book. But we'll discover that in a second. So nothing more technical. Now you can also make the decision to stick down your side, see this is one I haven't distressed both sides because it is going into the centre so it isn't actually going to be on display on both sides. You can make a decision to glue your samples on 
your designer paper now or your jelly plate or your tissue paper or whatever you fancy now or you can do it once you after you've constructed the book. I would suggest that it gets done before you actually construct the entire book. But we are going to go and construct the entire book for simplicity and ease and to keep you retention of time. So we've got these three now are all ready in their course routines. We've got the spine and I've distressed the spine and we've got the front and the back covers. What we're going to do is run our glue stick down the left and the right avoiding going on the spine. We've got our front and back covers. So it comes together really quickly and I'm sure I should have something protecting my work surface but because I am who I am this is just going to happen regardless try and avoid you're going to butt it up but you must remember to leave she says don't cover the crease. So you want it close, as close as possible, but you still want to be able to turn your page on the crease. Otherwise it's going, you're going to have great difficulty. And obviously apparently my eyesight is uh, a bit of a pickle. Because I've got a bit of a shadow going on. Right. So I think We've now got front and back cover on and our spine down the centre. Next move, putting our course routine together. So on the right hand side we're going to apply glue to one of the ends. Not the one with the plain bag. That is going to go in the centre. So making sure you've got, if you are distressing, it's distressed on both sides. That should do the trick. And this, going to fold back up, it's going to go on the outside here. to do this yet again as neatly and carefully as possible and so it goes there's nothing about rushing something and getting it wrong I'm just going to go that way about it you can see I've just turned it completely around so I can see where I'm going you learn these things don't you so that one's done Stress both sides. Again, repeat the process. Maybe I've learned, hopefully, something from that one. Glue. Turn it around. There we go. Done. So you've now got. sections here that are course routined now for the centre. So this one's distressed one side, left plane on the other. The plane is going to go towards the centre of the spine. We are now going to glue our panels up against that's going to butt up against the front left. And this one is going to butt up against the right hand side. And can you see that 
it completely lies flat in the centre there. So, applying glue. To both the outside edges. So this one is going to be butted up. And then this one gets butted up to that one. didn't crease it both ways. So I'm just making sure that the crease is here so the paper actually goes and can be folded both ways. spine, you've got your front and back cover, you've got your little sections that are coarse or tuned. so you now have your book in theory constructed ready to cover with paper and this very simply goes that each panel that you see here is now going to be glued onto both sides and we are going to also glue on our front cover and our back cover. So I am going to go for ease, I'm going to do our front cover You can see the border that we've left all the way round. I'm going to get possibly a selection of die cuts. Is there anything else there that I can use? Maybe a glittery rose. Another bird. I'm going to use, if I can see any, have I got any pop dots to hand? If not, this, oh, I've got some little foam squares, just something to raise this up. Just so it stands a little bit further out from the card. And these I believe came from Paper Mania. I'm just going to keep this really simple. One for the rose. If you're going to paste this over overseas, I would suggest that you don't use the foam dots because if you don't put the foam dots on, you could send it flat like so and it will fit in the mailing envelope without too much cost. The more that you start raising and having foam dots, um, I mean, I think in the UK it's more like five mil before they uh, take it away from being a small envelope and it instinctively just goes to a parcel. So the flatter you can make things, the 
doesn't necessarily amount to as much. You've got more leeway on the length, but that's just something to consider. So that's our front done and dusted. I know I haven't glued in. Let's glue in as an example one to go in the centre here. But bearing in mind you're going to do this 16 times. Is there a right or a wrong way for this? There you go. And yet again, just making sure that you're not quite gluing it onto the folds. Because if you glue it onto the folds, the folds aren't going to fold so well. And I'm going to carry on this process. And this way is using up my 6x6 pads. And you can see that we're beginning to bring this little cool sortina book together. And I'm just going to carry on and I would repeat the whole process along these four sections, along these three sections, along these four sections, and then you've got these four here that also need to be covered. The book then starts looking more like the finished example that we have over here. And that is how I've made this little corsetine, a little book out of scrapbooking paper. Thank you ever so much guys. I hope that was of some help. Catch you later. Bye bye.